What's up, guys? Welcome back to the other guys on the Badlands Podcast Network. I'm Jake Chatsky, joined, as always, by Paul Kilgallen. Paul, since the last time we spoke, uh, we have collectively been accused of losing a Super Bowl ring, gone to a different planet, potentially, based on what I've seen on the internet, and also run into one of the greatest Jets quarterbacks of all time. So, Paul, how the hell are you doing in the last <laughs> When you line it all up like that, it's been a busy couple of weeks for us, huh? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we miss one episode and all this shit goes down. <laughs> oh, yeah, the draft is three days away. Yeah, you're basically famous now. We got a we got a lot going on happening. <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I just got back, as you said. Uh, I was in Vegas over the weekend uh, to see Fish, who I've seen, you know, well over sixty times at this point. And um, the sphere is, I don't even really know if I have the words as a human to express what goes on in that place. And I'm not sure how many bands can handle that place, honestly. Um, fish is really thoughtful and they put a lot of work into it. And, and what came out the other side was just like, like I said, I don't know if I have words to explain it. The pictures, the videos, they're cool. They don't do it justice when you're inside. It's, uh, it's bananas. So had a good weekend, uh, came back and then like, right, you know, five minutes before we hopped on here, somebody sent me that the jets just released on Twitter that they're putting out, uh, you know, the first episode of flight 24 is, is coming out tomorrow. Um, which is always like. You know, it's it's different from from hard knocks in the sense that it's like state run media. Um, but I always find myself after watching one of those episodes, like I just can't help myself. Like I get that temporary like, oh, we're going 17 and 0. we're not losing a game. It happens to me every time I watch it. I can't help myself. So that'll be fun to watch tomorrow night. How was your two weeks off? <laughs> My two weeks off was good. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to watching flight school. Uh, you know, the Jets did their production team does such a great job internally. That was kind of like the thing with Hard Knocks last year. Everyone was like, "Why do we need it? We got a great internal team that obviously uh, gives us you know a great inside look at the Jets." Uh, so yeah, that was that was the deal with Hard Knocks. My last two weeks was good. Uh, went to Cincinnati for a New Heights live show. Subsequently got blamed for losing Jason Kelsey's Super Bowl ring in a vat of chili, um, which technically nothing he said was a lie. I did put it in there, but he told me to do that. Um, and then, you know, feeling a little down in the dumps because he was making fun of me on the internet. And what better way to cheer me up than go out to dinner and run into Mark Sanchez, which was fucking awesome. It was, he was the nicest dude of all time. Uh, I told him I was a huge Jets fan, and he was very appreciative of that. I don't think many Jets fans come up to him happily in Southern California. So, uh, you know, he, usually he gets USC or whatever, but he was great. We took a picture, made my night. It was awesome. So and just I, to clarify real quick, when he came up to you and asked to take a picture with Jets Jake, you you weren't you didn't like give him the celebrity like, hey man, I'm having I'm having dinner with my wife. Leave me alone. You yeah. I mean, it, it was kind of rude of him to interrupt my meal, but no, I, I, dude, I saw him at dinner, uh, immediately got so starstruck that like, we couldn't talk about anything else for the rest of the meal, did not want to bother him at the restaurant. So went to the bar next door and like waited for him to leave so that I could go up. To <laughs> it was like borderline stalkers, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not interrupting Mark Sanchez's meal. And I'm also not letting him leave this town without me taking a picture. So. Dude, we've talked about it a hundred times, but like those those teams were so much fun. Mark Sanchez is one of the I would say there's probably it's it's under five former Jets that like can do no wrong at this point for me. Like and he wasn't a perfect jet. Like it was a short, it was a very, very short, like rocket burst. Um and you know, the career kind of faltered after that and it wasn't perfect, but what he gave us for those two years was so incredible that like he can do no wrong forever. Um, he's, he's on that short list of just like beloved jets till the end of time, no matter what. So that's awesome that you got to bump into him. It was, it was great. And I was, uh, you know, I, I was texting with my wife and my in-laws and we were like, Mark Sanchez just walked into this restaurant and they immediately started texting about the butt fumble and she was she was like that's what i think of and i was like no you don't understand back-to-back -back <laughs> afc championship games 
And then the next day we were talking about that with our friends and she realized that he didn't win either of those AFC championship games. And I was like, yeah, why do you think I'm saying back to back AFC championship games, not Super Bowls? <laughs> She was like, this is so embarrassing. But, like, it was the peak of my Jets fandom. Like, those yeah. games meant a lot to me. And getting there meant a lot to me. So, it was very cool to see him in person. Hopefully, we get another run like that soon. And with that, let's transition to the thing that everyone is talking about this week. The NFL Draft. It is three days away on Thursday as you're listening to this. So, Paul, what I wanted to do... You talked about the draft on this uh, network ad nauseum. There's a lot of different scenarios going down. Today, in order to go through all of them and get our thoughts on all the different you know, pivot points, especially in the first round, I wanted to play a game where we talk about the different scenarios and do gun to your head, which one is more likely. Um, so we can go through all of them. But just before we, before we kick it off, just initial thoughts. How are you feeling with the draft three days away? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, they're they're in a good position, like we've talked about before, where they have a little bit of uh, choice ahead of them. They have some ability to flex things around. They have the ability to surprise us. Um, not going into the draft, this uh, I don't want to say completely unpredictably because it's like probably wide receiver O line, right? Um, maybe you know a. a a a wide receiver adjacent position um, also, but like we kind of know what we're getting, but also there's like Joe's talked about this a bunch of times within that group of that position group. There's like 11 possibilities pretty much. Um, And the jets have come out and done their whole, you know, we have 10 players that we're comfortable with thing, which they say every year, if they were picking at 31, they'd say they have 31 positions or players that they're, they're comfortable with. Right. So They've done all that, um, but like there truly is a little bit of surprisability ahead of us here where like they could make a home run swing and go up a few picks. They could do like the smart long term team management thing and maybe slide down a few picks, recoup a second rounder. They could just straight up pick a 10 and get a really good player. Right. So um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm especially excited for the draft party, which I'm still hoping you're going to be at. And, uh, you know, see all see every, all the Badlands crew out there. Um, so I'm pumped for the week. It's always like draft is my entire life. The draft has been one of my favorite NFL events of the year. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I think my me too. The draft has been one of my favorite events. I don't know if that's like. It's a little sick. Two Jets fans. It's a little yeah, sick. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, you know, we're always we're always close to the top. So why not love the draft? But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do love the draft. The draft party is going to be incredible. Everyone get their tickets. Fly out from California if you have to. I'm working on it. I uh, got some other external factors, but working on it, really trying. It's going to be incredible. And if you haven't already, check out the draft guide. Uh, if you are not a War Room member, it is worth the extra money. Uh, it is incredible. The amount of work that went into it is unbelievable. I take a look at it pretty much every day at this point. Yep. Um, and, you know, in preparation for the draft. And so you laid out some of these scenarios, but I, I'm i going to lay them out and then force you to pick. I'll give my response, but I'm really just setting you up here. The first one you talked about, um, the Jets currently have the 10th pick. Uh, we're going to start with making this general. I'm not going to make you pick a direction, but do you think it's more likely the Jets pick a 10 or make a trade? Yeah, so... <laughs> I think I think that's going to be really heavily dependent on on how it breaks, right? Like do four do four quarterbacks go in the top ten? If they do, um, then that can kind of change the math a little bit. Uh, the I, I think at the end of the day, um, I'm going to like fifty one forty nine this thing that they stay at ten. Um, I don't necessarily want them to stay at ten. I think it would be fun to to move in both directions. But I think slight, slight edge to staying at 10. And that's, I don't want to say it's like an indictment of Joe Douglas, um, but I'm just like, I'm a little, I'm a little like unconfident in the ability um, to have like the, the moment to moment moxie needed to react to what's happening live, have a trade partner worked out, get it all done. And like, end up with something that everybody's comfortable with and then make that move. Right. Um, 
the, I, we've seen a couple draft day trades. They went up and got ABT, which was awesome. Um, they like supposedly slid down and still got Denzel Mims, who they were going to supposedly pick with that second round pick anyway, which is like, I don't even know if I believe any of that. Um, so there's like a little bit of history in both directions. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just think it's going to depend on how it breaks. And, and, and based on the current information that's out there, I'm not sure that that quarterback run happens the way everybody thinks it is. And that, you know, whether it's Denver or somebody else down there, Minnesota that wants to move up, I'm just not sure it works out that way. So slight edge to staying at 10. I would agree. I think you hit the nail on the head at the end. Like, the, the scenarios that have the Jets moving up are a heavy run on quarterbacks. And I don't necessarily think, like, we get into this every draft cycle where the quarterbacks get elevated because they're an exciting thing to talk about in ESPN and NFL Network, like, watch you watch their shows. I've been in those production meetings. I know for a fact that it happens. Uh, I don't genuinely think that J.J. McCarthy is going to be, like, a top five pick in this draft or a top six pick, which is the scenario that I think would cause the jets to trade up. Um, I think trade we're, we're going to get into this. This is my next most likely. So I'm spoiling it, which is if the jets were, I think the jets stay at 10, but if the jets were to make a trade, do you think it's more likely that they're trading up to like get a player and go all in with this Aaron Rodgers year or trade back and recoup, try and recoup some of the value that they gave up in the Rodgers trade. I think it's way more likely that the Jets end up trading back in this draft. The issue is then you got to find a partner. And the only the only reason I can think of trading back is that there isn't this run on quarterbacks. The Jets have the pick right before the Vikings. And so if there's still a quarterback available at the Jets pick, you know Minnesota is trying to take one. So if there is another team that loves JJ, like we are open for business. And if a Dunze is off the board or, you know, if we're getting a little ahead of my rundown that I planned, but uh, in in any scenario where uh, the Jets are not picking at 10, I think it's because there hasn't been that run on quarterbacks. The Vikings are lurking right behind them and some team wants to come swoop them. Uh, so I think it's way more likely that the Jets were to trade back instead of trading up. Um, but I think m- most overall, it's likely that we're picking at 10. Do you have any inkling if the Jets were to make a trade? Do you expect them to be trading back? Or do you think they're going to try and go all in? I agree with you. I think it's back. Um, and and I think I'd be ca- 